A dizzying selection of artwork on show and on sale here in Paris as the FIAC Contemporary Art Fair opens its doors. With the Grand Palais closed for renovations, the events decamp to a new location in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower. As ever, it's a very cosmopolitan affair, 170 galleries from 25 different countries and breathing new life into that ever-evolving scene, a handful of galleries are showing their artists' work at the fair for the first time. Among them, Sultana Gallery, based here in Paris. They represent French painter Jean Clarac, who joins me now to tell us a little bit more about his work. Hi, Jean. Hello, Lydia. Now, your work features at the FIAC in two different ways, as part of the Gallery Sultana's selection, but also as part of the fair's parallel exhibitions, which they do in different locations around the city. This is your first time participating in the FIAC. How does that work for an artist? Do you speak to collectors, show your work? Uh, me, it's a bit specific because my, my exhibition is part of uh, a show in a museum. So it's not like in the fair, which is completely different. People are not acting the same way. But of course, I talk to the collector if they come to the show, friends and everyone which is coming to the opening. I was talking to them. So you're an ambassador for your art. Now, as you said, your work's on show at the Delacroix Museum. And what was it about the 19th century painter that resonates with you? Are there echoes of your work in his or vice versa? Uh, my work is very linked to the history of art, but the 19th century is very specific and Delacroix is very specific too. So when I get this invitation from Claire Besset, the museum and the FIAC, I uh, didn't really know how to start to work on Delacroix because I love his drawings, but I don't know his paintings that much as I can know like a uh, Renaissance painting or stuff like this. So I read his uh, diary and I start with that. You started with the man himself. Well, indeed, uh, Eugène Delacroix was known for the romantic quality of his scenes, telling a complete story in just one canvas. We asked the museum's director, Claire Besset, about how that's reflected in Jean's contemporary pieces. Here's more from her, along with a glimpse of that exhibition. Delacroix's Romeo and Juliet works well with the image of a young man on a scooter. It's not the official title, but it's how I describe it. It has a really lovely oval shape, inspired by a masterpiece of English art by Nicholas Hilliard. Seeing these pieces together, almost mirroring each other, Romeo holding Juliet and this young man of today with his smartphone and his scooter, I think it makes us question our notions of youth and identity. It's true that with that scooter, that smartphone, that portrait of a young man among a background of roses feels really highly realistic. It speaks to the, the present day. Is daily life your major focus? Do you paint from observation, from nature? No, I don't. I, I do uh, collage, uh, like drawings, and I use different kind of photographies that I uh, make collage with on Photoshop. And I paint looking at a screen. Oh, you and I think it. you can feel it looking at my work. You get a lot of inspiration from screens, photos? Yes, yes. I collect photos, I collect paintings on my computer a lot. Uh, I have like thousands and thousands of photos. And then when I'm composing a painting, I use them and it's always like um, like the young man we just saw on the screen. It's, uh, it's not one photo. It's several photos. I just do collage. I take an arm on a photo. Um, ahead on another one. So I tried to look to make paintings which look like photography, which look uh, photorealistic, but they are not. Uh, they really link to the way of doing composition in the Renaissance days, I think. Mm -hmm. And there are many different representations of young men, either alone or in groups. How would you describe uh, the vision of masculinity that you paint today? Uh, I think it's very simple. I think it's a, uh, it's a um, queer or gay uh, masculinity. So it's a bit fluid. It's a new vision of, of what men can be and what they can look like. And as we said, Jean's work is part of the FIAC side events, which include performances, talks and art in public spaces. 
This year, Alexander Calder's monumental Flying Dragon has touched down at the Place Vendôme in central Paris. The sculpture's a little less dainty than its wings suggest, weighing 18 tons. FIAC director Jennifer Flay tells us more. Art in the public space sometimes, and that was the case here at Place Vendôme, notably with the work of Paul McCarthy, can provoke debate, great debate even. But if we take away from art its potential to shake things up, to question, well, we empty it of its substance. Now, as we return to these in real life experiences, as we'd say on the internet, art galleries, uh, fairs, after a long time of experiencing things through screens uh, in virtual ways, how important do you think that is, that physical interaction with art? I think it's, uh, the main thing is to meet the work in real, of course, but I think uh, nowadays we should maybe travel a bit less and make the works travel a bit less. We, you don't need to meet all the works, of every artist. I think it's a bit too much, too fast. It's... Uh, I don't know, like if you look at like in the art history, you just need to do like two, three, like Eugène de la Croix went uh, only once in a trip in his whole life and he was very, very cultivated. So I think maybe we should do a bit less of fairs and travel a bit less for art. Well, coming back to the fair, the COVID pandemic saw art fairs cancelled around the world last year. And in general, the market was swift to adapt, shifting a lot of their business online. Another important development was the emergence of non-fungible tokens. These digital pieces, which are stored on the blockchain and usually bought by using cryptocurrencies, are perfect purchases for the virtual era. Some say they're exciting disruptors of an elitist industry. Others that they're just pixelated pictures with little artistic value. We went to find out more at the Alminreich Gallery here in Paris. Bronze, plaster, oil on canvas. Claire Tabouret's work uses traditional materials to create contemporary scenes. Yet her gallery also offers collector's pieces made from more cutting-edge elements, that is, digital tokens. Almin Resch was among the first in her sector to produce and sell NFTs after she embraced the format herself. And unlike those who say that on-screen artwork is lacking in soul, she believes it's the art of the future. NFTs create real emotions. I have some myself. I bought them very early on. It doesn't bother me at all. At one point, I was tempted to print them, to be able to look at them. But there's no point. It's perfect right where it is, on the blockchain, on my screen. Fascinated by the possibilities offered by these digital imprints, Resch invited César Piet to make four limited edition pieces sold in multiples of 25, 50 and 100. She says the young French artist was a natural choice given his background in 3D work and animation. Before I do my paintings, I do a 3D modeling on the computer. My whole catalogue of paintings, all of my references, are already digitalized. He's not the only artist to pivot to this new medium. Damien Hurst recently sold his hand-painted dot pieces as hybrid paintings and NFTs. Musician Grimes has made $6 million from NFT videos and music. And veteran DJ Paul Oakenfold is launching his latest album in entirely tokenized form. César Piet's work was sold on niftygateway.com, a specialized curated site which provides weekly drops of highly anticipated work. Their online auctions are often over in a matter of minutes. Sotheby's has recently launched its own metaverse where collectors and artists browse a virtual showroom and click through to purchases. The Rarible and OpenSea platforms also provide artists with the opportunity to get their work out there without going through a cultural gatekeeper, but with a guarantee of authenticity for the buyer. 
c'est ce que la blockchain This is the benefit of blockchain. It's transparent and provides traceability on transactions. From the creator of the work and through the editing process, every step can be identified. Now, digital artists have another means of selling their work without having to go through a third party. A new frontier for the contemporary art market that could move collections from our homes to our hard drives. But for now, NFTs sit alongside the 3D shapes and forms of real life pieces. So what about you, Jean? Do you see yourself adopting these new digital platforms to sell your work? Uh, I think it can change a lot of things and uh, blockchain is a great technology. Depends what you do with it. Jean, thank you so much for joining us thank today. You. We'll wrap up the show with another glimpse at an art fair taking place in the French capital, Asia Now. In just seven years, the fair staked out a place for itself as a leading event for contemporary work from Japan, China, Singapore and Iran, among others. That's taking place from October 21st to October 24th. Remember, you can get more arts and culture on our website and on our social media feeds. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this.